Thank you for joining. Um, I feel like we're joining from all parts of the world. So good morning, if it's too early, good afternoon, um, if you're in London and good evening, if you're on the other side of the planet. Um, my name is Anurag and I will be talking about building a simple, modern and collaborative DAW for producers of all levels. And I know that's a meaty title, um, but I'm sure uh, as we uh, talk, we will uh, break it down. So let me just start with um, something that is uh, a pretty popular talk on ADC. Uh, David Rowland, who is the CTO of Fraction, um, had uh, previously uh, talked about why you shouldn't write a DAW. And his entire presentation is kind of themed around this quote uh, by Lex, uh, which goes that if you really think about it, the economic incentives aren't there. And that um, it takes so long to develop uh, a DAW that there is no innovation left um, that people can even imagine. But then today we don't live in that world. Even a year ago, we have GitHub Copilot, we have Cursor, we have Devon, and we even have Traction's own engine to really get us going um, and thinking about innovation. So really this whole presentation starts where David ended, which is innovation. And I'm just not gonna give you an abstract, inspiring quote about innovation. I'm actually um, gonna try and break down innovation into three pillars, which is simple, modern, and collaborative. Um, and for everybody. Um, and if, if you're someone who likes more um, prescriptive active voicing, then it's about driving simplicity, adopting modern standards, and enabling collaboration for producers of all levels. So let's just kick it off. Let's talk about simplicity and why that is important for a DAW. So very recently, uh, Dylan Field, uh, the CEO of Figma, had um, talked about in the config of 2024, where he talked about how people are kind of overwhelmed with the complexity of Figma. And he quoted this tweet where uh, someone wanted them to remove features and to add more, which is why the focus of this new uh, evolution of Figma was primarily about reducing complexity and other big feature um, updates, which really tells us that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It's not that Figma decided to strip away features. It, uh, they decided to reduce the complexity. And it happens it's happened historically where whenever there are very complex status quo um, that are more attributing towards professionals, um, it is challenged and disrupted by another product which kind of reduces that complexity and enables more and more people to use it. We had Canva for Photoshop, we had Figma for Envision, we had Squarespace and Wix for um, website development, which really begs the question of what is this new DAW that could replace or at least complement the existing pro tools that we have around, um, which kind of just looks pretty daunting for a new user. In fact, we went and researched um, about uh, on Reddit and in person about people who uh, are kind of using the DAW or have seen uh, how a DAW is used and what their complaints were. And a overwhelming number of features was the top complaint um, through and through. So how do we how do we go about reducing complexity. Um, there are a few arguments that I have. The first one is against skeuomorphism. And if you have ever opened a DAW, you would have seen something that is like this. And it makes sense. Um, skeuomorphism is a term which denotes that people bring in or are motivated to bring in real world looks into the digital equivalents of them. And analog compressors and pedals are one of, uh, one of those. And it makes sense because it offers you tactile feedback. You kind of like, you have the same memory from where you, when you've used it. There's nostalgia associated with it. The problem really lies in that the new wave of bedroom producers haven't seen those analog equipment. Um, and what they really crave is something that is more um, intuitive and something that is more speaking to their muscle memory from other products that they use outside of creative software or outside of music production. Another um, argument I have is, or another suggestion I have is making a product user flow evolutionary. One of the apps that I really like using and advocate for is Family. Um, it's a crypto wallet um, manager. And what one of the design philosophies is about how they 
uh, evolve their experiences um, instead of just showing them all at once. And I really like their idea about making a product accessible to newcomers without sacrificing depth or power for experienced users. The final um, suggestion here is breathing room. We're just evolutionary. Um, like we have anxiety from uh, looking at density, um, looking at sharp edges. And um, DAWs infamously are full of those. There are grid lines, there are small text, there are sensitivity. And um, there's a huge um, kind of push towards making it more breathable and uh, friendly. Uh, with that, let's move on to modern standards. And this is going to be a lot. Uh, so I'm going to try facing myself. Um, but there, let's just kick it off with this classic phenomena called the innovator's dilemma. What it really is, it talks about how um, when incumbents have reached a stage of maturity, um, they kind of plateau in their innovation. And there is this fear of change, fear of losing your customers that prevents them from making um, big bets. And that's where newcomers kind of just like come in with probably a smaller user base, which is more niche, or a low cost offering, which um, tries to challenge the status quo. And eventually they pick up while the incumbents kind of uh, collapse because of lack of innovation. And the um, examples are quite quite many. Kodak, um, who couldn't get out of the digital, digital camera um, thing that Canon um, kind of invented. Um, we have Blockbuster, who fell prey to Netflix's way of uh, broadcast or um, having streaming uh, movies. You have Nokia, which kind of did not catch up to the way Apple was releasing phones, and the Toys R Us, which fell uh, because of Amazon. And the usual. Um, Suggestions around fighting innovators' dilemma is around how do you go from a short-term focus to a long-term vision? Um, how do you have more bravery in kind of moving away from what has made you um, uh, prevalent in the user's mind and try and start again? Um, challenging complexity by partnerships and figuring out other people who are solving it. Um, and being really a customer fanatic, fanatic um, that's, I think, a Bezos term, uh, to learn more and more about how users are using your products. Which really brings us to the elephant in the room. And a lot of talks in ADC X and ADC are around AI. Um, and my call to the audience here is that AI is not no longer just a feature. It's actually a standard. It affects the way you architect your entire product. And the other argument I have here is that the only job that AI has is to maximize your creative headspace. So let's let's break it down. So if you look at how AI adoption has um, has, has occurred in the world, um, and just business creative uh, software, you have seventy two percent who are already using AI in their workflows. You have consumer tech um, where most people. Um, have really adopted towards um, a large variety of AI products. And then you have music tech as well, where um, two thirds have at least used um, AI offerings and a third um, have actually benefited from using um, AI. So people are getting more and more used to um, having a product be more fluid, more responsive and more inspiring. And to be AI native is key. And those do affect how you start from the ground up. We actually, again, uh, had a research uh, where we read through thousands of comments to understand what is really the challenge in the creative process when it comes to music production. And what came out very loud and clear is that creativity is something that is an insp inspiration problem and a perfection problem, perfectionism problem, which uh, narrowed down is a starting and a stopping problem. So AI here is um, the way you solve it is usually in a way where it maximizes creative headspace. If you offer too much control, um, that can be overwhelming. And if you offer too much convenience, that can remove the creative agency. So it's really the um, the challenge for AI to make that um, come in the middle. Um, which is why you'll see a lot of movement from traditional DAWs, which are trying to take um, more steps towards reducing in, introducing more convenience in the workflows. And then you have um, the more um, adventurous AI companies like Synon Judio trying to come in the middle of giving more creative agency and having more control over um, the process. What really will come out as we move more and more closer to the middle is that the product producers brand and their taste really come through in their productions um, and they're able to get rid of the algorithmic processes. 
And there are a lot of really cool companies coming out in this uh, space. Um, obviously, it would fill the entire slide if I mentioned all of them. But some of them that I really like um, is uh, more of New Tone. Uh, there is RipX, there is Music Effects from Google, there's Ace uh, Studio. So they're doing a really co- lot of cool stuff um, that kind of uh, really expands your creative headspace. There are a lot of challenges and um, Again, it's a very deep topic, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but um, data obviously is a huge challenge when it comes to building your own AI uh, pipelines. And there's a, um, I read somewhere where a third of the investment for AI-based companies, and especially in the creative space, is really going into licensing fees and collecting data. Um, so one of the ways to solve this is by, by tagging data and creating synthetic data for being able to build those AI pipelines. Or you could also just use existing models um, to power your first uh, few products and then eventually um, lean more into the differentiating products. There's also the UX problem, which is how do you balance control with convenience? Then the next one is cloud. Uh, 2024, and we still have a cloud native um, issue with DAWs. Um, And again, just to clarify, cloud native is not browser-based. What it really requires um, or what it really provides is a seamless transition between desktop, mobile, and tablet. Um, you get offline support. You have um, low-end devices finally been being able to create music. Um, but it's not easy, um, which is why there is still a bit of a fragmentation when it comes to what is cloud-native and what is not. Um, obviously, there is huge data synchronization issues. Um, and... Obviously, it is yet to be fully explored, but um, with real-time uh, databases with version control and bandwidth management, you can sort of compete um, with that problem. And then there is the latency in real-time processing. Again, this is not an easy problem, um, and you can kind of now uh, think about building um, more client-side um, processing with web audio plugins, with web audio modules, um, where you can start to process a lot of stuff in the client and not send everything to the server. Then you have plugin compatibility and new standards that are coming up, like Clap, that kind of solve that problem where you wouldn't necessarily have um, the same plugin on both sides of the client and the server. But there's a lot of other problems. And since we have a lot to uncover, I'm going to keep uh, pushing us through to more and more things in the modern standards, which is interoperability. Now, um, which really goes to the philosophy that I have learned through my experiences, which is uh, we should not have cliffs when it comes to um, having uh, a product experience. They use a ton of light, spending hours on your product and then reaching a cliff. And how do you solve for that? Um, you can... A lot of the products today solve it by stem exports, where you can um, just have all your stems being exported. Uh, but then the other cleaner way is to just have files that can be exported to new DOS so that you can incrementally add more features without worrying about um, users having a cliff problem. And uh, the DAW project is really something that is helping towards that. And there are also experimental um, repositories uh, like DAWbird, which I have a huge respect for, which actually understands the binaries of each DAW and helps us um, build um, interoperability from the ground up. Finally, um, enabling collaboration and how do we um, think about that? My biggest argument here is that collaboration is actually table stakes and there is some data to back it up. If you look at how digital collaborative tools have emerged, um, they got a lot of adoption um, through the years from 2017 to 2020. There was a huge curve in people wanting more and more collaborative. Figma is a huge success story and all of them kind of um, got into the whole bandwagon. But also if you look at the revenue, it's kind of falling down based on just collaboration, which tells us that collaboration is more integral. It's, it's just something that needs to be there. It's no longer a differentiation, which kind of, reminds us that DAWs are still kind of struggling with real-time collaboration because um, despite all of these benefits of collaboration that you get geographical freedom and you can resource optimize with studios um, and time and then you have the synergy between two different uh, musicians and producers from different parts of the earth being able to collaborate, it's not that easy. Uh, you have the same problems as cloud native. You have file format issues. You have um, different plugins at different on um, different um, um, clients um, and some of them can be proprietary and having to sync all of that uh, is hard. You have timing issues if you have playback on both sides. Um, and sometimes you just have hardware specific features that are really hard to um, bring over um, and have a collaborative experience that users expect from other products like Figma. Uh, but there is still um, a lot of really good work happening here. Um, Bandlab and Avid both have uh, native collaborative um, 
features. And on the right side, you have uh, able to link in Cubase, uh, Vista Connect, which kind of solve for more specific rec recording uh, problems, either on the local network or um, remotely. And um, the other thing is that you don't have to know, uh, build like a whole um, real-time communication platform yourself. There are products like LiveBlocks and Apley that kind of give you that initial framework to build on top of. In closing, um, I really want us to be able to think beyond um, what we have already seen. Um, innovation is a continuous cycle. And the only way to think about the future, the only way to predict the future is to create it. Um, this is an often used quote, but I really stand by it. And I think uh, we've only scratched the surface uh, of what can be a next generation DAW. I also am a founder of Ripple, where we're this very small plug, but we're kind of also solving similar problems and have the same idea of first principles and seeing where we can take um, this um, experience. And I, you can find me. I'll be in the poster session in Gather Town. I'll also um, be available on Discord to answer questions. I'll be coming to Bristol, uh, so you can find me there, and I'm easily available on the internet. So with that, thank you.